In this video, we'll go over cards that you never want to draw in your opening hand and are best left inside your deck. But you still play these cards in your deck because they have excellent effects when they're brought out with other cards. The term for these is garnets, but that's basically the gist of the list. And today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, which allows making your own website a breeze. And at number 10, we have Metal Foes Fusion. This one is kind of a soft number 10 spot because this is the Archetype's fusion spell card, which is definitely used in order to get out their fusion monsters. However, this card is also a garnet for pretty much every other deck that plays it outside of Metal Foes. And it definitely sees competitive play in decks that are not Metal Foes, because this card actually has an excellent graveyard effect, where if this card is in your graveyard, it can shuffle itself back into your deck in order to allow you to draw one card. So if you just accidentally mill this card to the graveyard, you just went plus one in card advantage by returning it to the deck. Although if you then draw this card with that plus one, then that kind of eliminates the usefulness of it, since it is very useful for the graveyard effect, but you don't want it in your hand, which is kind of hilarious that a fusion spell card for an archetype is played so heavily outside of its archetype, and never for the effect of actually performing fusion summons. The graveyard effect is just so good that it's usually sent to the graveyard, with cards like Foolish Burial Goods just to draw a card. And to increase the amount of spell cards in your graveyard if you're playing Sky Strikers. Although, since the archetype it belongs to does like to see this card in their hand, it's only at the number 10 spot, even if it's used much more often for its graveyard effect. And at number 9, we have Destiny Hero Malicious. This card has a graveyard effect, where it can banish itself from the graveyard in order to special summon another copy of it from the deck, which is an incredibly good effect that's not once per turn and is only limited by the amount of copies you're allowed to have in your deck, as it's currently semi-limited to two. So this card is obviously much better in the graveyard, as that's where it activates its effect, and the hero archetype is able to get it to the graveyard very easily, especially with cards like Vision Hero Vion, which can be special summoned from the deck with Vision Hero Increase. So sending militias to the graveyard is generally the start of some hero combos, but it's not the end of the world if those combos start with malicious in your hand as they also play cards like Vision Hero Ferris, which requires you to send a hero monster from your hand to the graveyard in order to special summon it. So, Malicious is definitely a viable option for Ferris to send to the graveyard, although you get the best benefit out of it if it stays in your deck and is sent to the graveyard in some other way, because its effect activates from the graveyard to special summon other copies from the deck. So, if you draw both copies of Destiny Hero Malicious in your opening hand, it's kind of a dead card unless you have a way to return at least one of the copies back into the deck, which used to be accomplished with cards like Plague Spreader Zombie during the Synchro Era. And at number 8, we have Speedroy Taketomborg. This card has the effect where it can special summon itself from your hand if you control a wind monster, and then goes on to have other effects which are rarely used outside of its Speedroy archetype. You see, the reason you want this card in your deck is because it can be searched out through Speedroy Terratop. Speedroy Terratop is a really good card which can special summon itself from your hand if you control the monsters, and then it allows you to add a Speedroid monster from your deck to your hand. So, if you add Speedroy Takatomborg, it can then special summon itself from your hand and then gives you two monsters on the board without using your normal summon or any other kinds of restrictions for the rest of the turn. So you can use them for link plays, synchros, going to rank 3 XC's monsters, which is what they were most commonly used for. And since this combo is so good, Speedroy Terratop is currently limited to one, and they even banned MX Saber Invoker as he was a little bit too good with the Speedroy Terratop combo. However, kind of like Destiny Hero Malicious, it's not the end of the world if you have Speedroy Takatomborg in your hand, since it can special summon itself if you control a wind monster, and if anything, the combo requires it to go into your hand eventually. It's just this card is infinitely more valuable if it stays in your deck, and only gets added to your hand during the combo, you don't actually want to draw this card ever, which is why it makes this list, but at kind of a low spot. Very few of the other Garnets are just completely dead in your hand, which is why there's going to be a lot more like this as the list continues. And at number 7, we have Wind Witch Glass Bell. This card has the effect that when it's summoned, you get to add a Wind Witch monster from your deck to your hand, but you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except for Wind Monsters which isn't a big deal with the Wind Witch combo. You see, this card is also a tuner, so it's not a half bad to have in your hand, but like Speedroy Takatomborg, it's much better in your deck, as it can be special summoned with the effect of Wind Witch Ice Spell, which is the starting combo piece to the Wind Witch combo. You see, with Ice Spell, if you control no monsters, you can special summon the card from your hand, and then special summon a Wind Witch monster from your deck, 
which you'll use to bring up Wind Witch Glass Bell, who can then use its effect to add Wind Witch Snow Bell from your deck to your hand, which you can then special summon from your hand if you control two or more wind monsters. You can then use Glass Bell and Ice Bell to synchro into Wind Witch Winter Bell, and then use Snow Bell and Winter Bell to go into Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, which is a really good level 8 synchro monster that's supposed to be balanced around the fact that it's hard to bring out, as it can just once per turn negate monster effects and has a whole bunch of other effects that make it really good against high level monsters in battle. But with the Wind Witch Engine, you can bring out Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon without using your normal summon but the combo does ultimately lock you out of special summoning other monsters from your extra deck, so it's not completely without cost, but still worth doing anyway because of how good Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon is, and how good it is to bring it out without using your normal summon and only one card from your hand. However, Wind Witch Glass Bell is a combo piece that is best used inside your deck, as the only use it has outside of the combo is to search out Ice Bell, so that you can do the combo on a different turn. Even Wind Witch Snow Bell is slightly better in your hand, since it ultimately does end up in your hand for the combo anyway, in the same way as Speed Roy Taka Tomborg. Out of the three Wind Witch cards that are involved in the combo, Wind Witch Glass Bell is definitely the one you want to stay in your deck. And at number 6, we have Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion. This card is a level 2 machine type tuner, which has the effect to special summon a token when it's sent to the graveyard. And because of this combo, it's played very heavily alongside Crystron Halquiferbrex, which can bring it out directly from the deck. And then you can use it for more link combos or synchro plays, while also giving you more advantage with the token it summons when it's sent to the graveyard. And it can also be used with Halquiferbrex in order to go into Mecha Phantom Beast Aurorodon, which is a link 3 monster that requires 2 plus machines its materials, which Halquiferbrex and O-Lion fulfill. And that card allows you to special summon three tokens, which enables all kinds of combo plays for a whole bunch of different kinds of decks. Mega Phantom Beast O-Lion is just a combo machine and is played in a whole bunch of decks outside of its archetype. And it's best used from the deck and not really in your hand, as most decks that use the card only play one copy, and you'll lose advantage if you have to use Halquiferbrax to special summon it from your hand, which thankfully is an option. It doesn't need to be special summoned from the deck. And that's kind of why it's lower on the list. It's technically a Garnet, but it can be used from your hand. You just gain more advantage if it's not. And at number 5, we have Stardust Dragon Assault Mode. Technically, all of the Assault Mode cards could fit at this spot, since this card is on here for the same reason as all the others. It's just out of all of the Assault Mode monsters, Stardust Dragon is the only one that saw any competitive play. You see, in order to bring this card out, you need to use the effect of the Trap card Assault Mode Activate which requires you to tribute the Synchro Monster associated to the Assault Mode one, in this case Stardust Dragon, and then it allows you to special summon that monster from your deck. So if you only play one Assault Mode monster in your main deck, and you draw into it for your hand, you just can't summon it since it needs to be in your deck. Although, recently they did release a whole bunch of new support for Assault Mode monsters, and the Quick Play Spell card Assault Mode Zero does allow you to special summon the Assault Mode from your hand, finally. As before that card was released, Assault Mode decks were kinda screwed if they drew cards in their hand, unless they played a terrible support card like Assault Teleport to return them to the deck. And what Stardust Dragon Assault Mode does, for all the effort required to bring it out, is if your opponent activates an effect, you contribute this card to negate and destroy that effect, and then this card will special summon itself during the end phase. So a pretty good Omni Negate that allows the card to return every turn so that you have one negate per person's turn which is why this card saw some competitive success back in the Dragon Ruler era, as they were able to go into level 8 synchro monsters really easily. And today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, a website that lets you build websites for whatever you might need a website for. Now, as someone with no experience building websites, I tried it out for myself and found it to be rather easy, as it was a very user-friendly interface with lots of tutorials and tips on how to do certain things. They also have features to just let you track the status of your website, allow users to leave comments, and a whole bunch of other extensions that allow you to manage inventory and promote products and the like. So, if you're in need of making a professional looking website, you can sign up under my link at squarespace.com slash thedualogs to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And now, on to the number 4 spot. And at number 4, we have Mare Mare. This is a level 7 tutor monster which has a unique effect where it can reduce its level by 1 in order to special summon a level 1 token, and it can only use this effect thrice per turn. So it's one of the few cards in the game that has a 3 time per limit on its effect, which does let you bring out 3 tokens, so it's super good. 
which is why this card is supposed to be balanced by its summoning condition, where it cannot be special summoned except by the effect of a worm type monster. So the best way to bring out this card is with Yazi, Evil of the Yang Zing, a level 7 synchro monster with generic materials that has the effect where it can destroy itself and one other card your opponent controls, and then has a floating effect where, if it's destroyed by a card effect, you can special summon a worm type monster from your deck. So Yazi allows you to destroy one of your opponent's monsters, it can also destroy itself to proc its own floating effect, which will allow you to bring out Mare Mare, which can then be used for a whole bunch of combo pieces as being able to bring out three tokens, in addition to the fact that it's a tuner monster, is very useful. Although Yazi only special summons monsters from the deck, not the hand. So if you do draw into Mare Mare, it can be kind of dead in your hand. But only kind of, because there is a Link monster, called Shaman of the Tenyi, which is a worm monster and has the effect where you can discard one card to special summon a worm monster from your graveyard. So if you do for some reason draw Mare Mare, you can discard it and then special summon it with the effect of Shaman of the Tenyi, assuming you had another viable target in your graveyard before you use its effect. So it's not completely dead in hand. Although Shaman of the Tenyi does require two worm monsters as its materials, so it's not really live in every deck that might run Yazi which still definitely puts Mare Mare in Garnet territory, where you only want it in your deck, and it can give you some great advantage if you're able to cheat it out properly. But there are backup options if you do get it in your hand, which aren't available to every deck that might make use of it. And at number 3, we have Psyframe Driver. This vanilla monster at 2500 attack is the key card in the Psyframe archetype, especially with Psyframe Gear Gamma which is used alongside of it most often. You see, Psyframe Gear Gamma has the effect that if you control no monsters and your opponent activates a monster effect, you can negate and destroy that card and then special summon this card from your hand, in addition to one Psyframe Driver from your hand deck or graveyard. So this can potentially allow you to go plus two in card advantage. You're destroying one of your opponent's cards and getting a free monster out of your deck or graveyard as well as special summoning this card to the field which if used during your turn can allow you to use those two cards for synchro plays or link summoning. And their archetype even has an excellent synchro monster called Psyframe Lord Omega. But if this effect is used during your opponent's turn, then you might run into the downside of this card, where this card banishes the monsters that it special summoned with its effect during the end phase. So the best use of this card is to negate one of your opponent's hand traps or monster effects during your turn in order to gain all of that sweet advantage while also getting a negate. And since you're required to play Psyframe Driver in this combo, as you can't actually use any of the Psyframe geared cards without Psyframe Driver available, you definitely don't want it in your hand as it's just taking up a spot. Luckily, the Psyframe Gear cards allow you to special summon it from basically anywhere, so if you do have it in your hand, it is still a viable target. You just don't want it in your hand, because part of the great benefits of this card is being able to recover it from the graveyard or bringing it out from the deck. If it's in your hand, you still gain advantage by negating and destroying one of your opponent's cards, but you gain so much more advantage if it's not in your hand. So it definitely fits this list of cards that you never want to draw, but at least it's usable in its combo if it is in your hand, which the top two spots aren't really. And at number two, we have Predaplant Darling Tonia Cobra. This card has the effect that if it's special summoned by the effect of a Predaplant monster, you get to add a fusion spell card from your deck to your hand. And since this works on any fusion or polymerization card, it's good in basically any deck since it allows you to get access to instant fusion or super polymerization, since both of those cards are really good in just pretty much any deck. However, since this effect is so good, it does have a once per duel restriction, which is totally valid. And there's another Predaplant card called Predaplant Orpheus Scorpio, which has the effect that when it's summoned, you can send a monster from your hand to the graveyard to special summon a Predaplant monster from your deck. And this is the card most commonly played alongside Cobra in order to bring it out for its search effect, which can't activate if the card is in your hand. This is one of the few Garnet cards which is commonly played in multiple copies because of how much you need to have Cobra on your deck for the combo to work, and because you can just discard the other copy of Cobra in your hand if you happen to draw into it in order to activate Scorpio's effect. And then once you get the search off, you'll have two level 3 monsters on the field which can be used in the same way as Speedroy Teratop combo. And at number one, we have Gem Knight Garnet, kind of the originator of the term Garnet for a card you don't want in your hand. You see, there's this banned spell card called Brilliant Fusion, 
which was used in a whole bunch of different kinds of decks before it got banned for being too strong. Where? It could fusion summon a gem knight fusion monster by using materials from your deck, with the downside that the fusion monster would have zero attack and defense. Gem knights have this really good fusion monster called gem knight seraphonite, which requires a light monster as one of its materials, and it has the effect to give you an additional normal summon, which is super good since the game is balanced around having one normal summon. And since one of its materials was light, there were a lot of really good targets to send directly from your deck to the graveyard with Brilliant Fusion, which would allow you to gain even more advantage. However, there was one little downside to all of these great benefits, and that was the other material of Gem Knight Seraphonite, where it also required one Gem Knight monster. And all of the Gem Knight main deck monsters are kind of terrible outside of their archetype. So the one which was most commonly used was Gem Knight Garnet, simply because it had the highest attack points out of all the level 4 lower Gem Knight monsters. So that in worst case scenario, if you did draw into Gem Knight Garnet, you could at least have a 1900 attack beat stick, which is better than nothing. But Brilliant Fusion can only use targets from your deck, so if you drew into a Gem Knight Garnet, you couldn't actually use a Brilliant Fusion unless you had some way to return it to your deck, or played multiple copies of Garnet. And the most common ratios of this combo was to play three copies of Brilliant Fusion and a single copy of Gem Knight Garnet and just hope you never drew into it. And this combo was so good, and Garnet was so bad in your hand, that the term for a card you don't want in your hand was named after this card, which definitely fits all of the criteria for this list. And it should be obvious to anyone why this card is the number one spot. All right, and that's the list. Are there any other Garnet cards that I may have missed which should have made this list? If so, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments, as well as ideas for future videos just like this one. And also, did you know only 42.1% of people who watch these videos are actually subscribed to the channel?